Hi everyone, Eric Archer here from Texas Instruments, and today we're going to do a smart space video lesson with Ty Cook. And Ty is going to tell us all about the scientific method. Ty? Hey Eric, my name is Ty Cook, and I wanted to introduce myself to y'all, the viewers. Uh, I am a seventh grade science teacher. I teach life science in Georgia, just outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And every year we start in my class with the scientific method. And this is one of my favorite things to teach because I feel like it's so applicable. Doesn't matter what you do in life, every single one of us has questions that we wanna answer. And right now there's really important questions that scientists are seeking to answer, like trying to find a vaccine for COVID-19 and important things that are gonna save people's lives. So the scientific method is so, so important. And my students really love this, but my first year teaching the scientific method they really didn't understand the need for all of the steps. And I was looking for a way to kind of show them how could we actually walk through and do this as a class together. And at my house, I had my own garden and I've always loved planting plants and we teach photosynthesis and plant cells in my classroom. And so I had some extra seeds sitting around one day and I was like, you know what? we should just actually do an experiment in class, a controlled experiment, where we look at these steps of the scientific method. And I thought that my students weren't gonna be very interested in it, but it blew me away because they wanted to see the progress of what was going on with our experiment every day when they came into class. So this is now something we do every year. And what I love about this is students, y'all can do this at home too, my students would go home and they would also plant seeds even at their house in a pot or in the ground and they would kind of track and show me the progress. So the question is why do we use the scientific method and what is it? And the scientific method is a series of steps that scientists use so that we can walk through how to find answers and solutions to the problems that we have. So we've got to have a process. As scientists around the world, we want to go about looking for these answers in similar ways. And these are the steps that we're going to use. And the very first one is the easiest step. All you need to do is ask a question, right? And every single one of you out there, I want you to think about right now, what is one question that you have about anything? Look around you. Think about the world and nature. What's a question that you have? That's the first step, and that's all you have to do to begin. So for us today in our experiment, I have something that we are going to actually question. I've got two cups, and those are gonna serve as my pots. This is what I use in class, and we sit them in the window seal. I've got my seeds. We've got our sunflower seeds. Another good seed that is really great is a corn seed because they grow super quick, right? It's one of the fastest growing plants. Um, when I went to the store to get the potting soil for this experiment, I remember looking at the shelf, and you, if you haven't been to the store, kids, and looked at potting soil, there's like 20 different kinds. And I'm like, what's the difference? And you've got your store brand, and I've just labeled it here. That would be like your generic, least expensive uh, potting soil that you can get. And then you have your premium brand. And this is where my question came into play. You know, that one brand that charges like twice as much for the soil, Eric? And on the bag, it says that they grow plants twice as fast and twice as big. And I said, is that really possible? Because I'm paying twice as much, so it should be true. Because if it's on the bag, it's gotta be true, right? You would think. So that's what I was testing with my students. And we said, you know what, we're going to put that claim on the bag to test. And we're going to say, does it actually grow twice as fast? Because we paid twice as much from it. So that's where we start. We've got our question. And in a controlled experiment, here's something you got to be super careful about. I always tell my students, we want to test one thing at a time. Because we want to know that our results, the seeds and how tall they grow, are from this one thing. And if we test two, three, four different things all at once, we'll have no idea what caused that outcome. Was it the soil? Was it the sunlight? Was it the water? So we wanna make sure in a controlled experiment, just do one variable. And in this one, we're gonna make sure everything's the same 
except for the potting soil. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start filling up these cups. Now, the second part of our experiment is that we need to form a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is basically your prediction of what the outcome might be. So at home, y'all need to decide, do you think that the store brand will grow? I mean, the premium brand, not the store brand, I can't see it. The <laughs> premium brand, will this grow it twice as fast or twice as big? That could be your hypothesis, or you may be like, mm, I don't really think so. I think that that's just marketing. I think they just put it on there to get people to pay twice as much. I think the store brand is going to grow it just as well. So you have to just make a prediction and that's step two of the scientific method. Pretty easy so far, right? Hey Ty, how many, uh, how many students do you have that this was the first time they've ever planted anything? So that is actually what blew my mind. My first year teaching when we did this, I had extra seeds at the end of it and I was just going to toss them out and my students fought over getting the seeds. And I started asking them, I, you know, I said, have y'all ever, you know, planted anything? And some of them had never planted a plant. Some of them had never seen where vegetables came from, like how they actually grow on the plant. And so at the end of that school year, we actually started our own garden at the school. And so we have 11 raised bed gardens and we made a chicken coop and we go out into the garden and plant because I realized my students wanted to know about this but they had never seen it. So that's awesome. Yeah. And when I gave them the corn seeds, they would take pictures of them at home and then they would show me how they had grown. And it was really cool to see them bringing it in. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to label our cups because we want to make sure that we know what soil we put in each one. So we've got our premium and we've got our store brand. Now, if you wanted to test something else different than what I'm doing here, you could, some other ones that we've come up with before is amounts of sunlight that our plants get. You know, do we leave them in the window seal all day? Do we do it for half the day? We've tested the amount of water that we use. We've used different, like we're gonna give it 20 milliliters and then we're gonna give another plant 40 milliliters to see which one is gonna have the best impact but we're just going to do the soil. All right, so we've got our two cups. Everything's the same except for our soil. And now we've got step three, which is we have to test the hypothesis. And all that means is there's got to be an experiment that we set up that's going to give us the answer that we're looking for. So we got to make sure that at the end of this, are we going to know if this grew it twice as fast or are we not? And that's why it's important that we have two different ones that we're comparing to one another. So I'm going to use sunflowers. This is another really great seed to use because they grow six, eight feet tall. And you're also going to end up with some really pretty sunflowers if you plant them in the ground or in pots that are big enough because they've got to have a lot of soil because they're really big. So here's our little seeds and we're going to just pop one of these into our cup. And now when you plant, this is something I also noticed, I'm just going to take the seed and I'm going to kind of push it down like maybe half an inch to an inch. We don't want it too, too far, but we want to make sure that it's covered in soil. And that's something my students always ask, like, how do we actually plant it? And I just kind of take my finger and poke it down there and then just gently cover the surface. So now we've got our sunflower seeds and they are all good to go. Now, like I said before, we're in step three, which is we are testing the hypothesis. So here's what we do in class, and this is what I would have you do at home, and this would be a really fun thing for you to track uh, over the next months, is we have to record data. That's step four. So we've now started our experiment, but what are we gonna do? How are we gonna know if it worked? How do we know if this was worth two times the cost? Well, we're gonna have to actually record data and data is something precise. So we're gonna measure how tall our plants are growing over the next month. That's what we did in class. You could do it until they're full grown and really get some good results in data. 
So that data is what you're going to use at the end of your experiment to determine if your hypothesis was correct or if it was incorrect. And so we're going to water these every day. We're going to sift them in the exact same spot so they're getting the same amount of sunlight. I've got this little uh, graduated cylinder here and I always measure out the water to show my students that everything's exactly the same so we know whatever's happening is because of this soil. And then every week on Monday, what we would do is we would actually go, we would take our plants and we would measure them. And then we would record that on our lab sheet. And at the end of the month, we would stop and we would analyze our results. And that sometimes can be easy and sometimes it can be hard because in some experiments, there might be thousands of participants. There might be tons of people and tons of information and you really have to stop and look at what is our data actually telling us? What do we now know or what do we not know? And in this experiment, we're just looking at four measurements of how tall these plants actually grew over that time frame. And so we'll be able to determine either the premium did make it grow twice as fast, twice as tall, or it didn't. And those people that put that on the bag are just getting you to spend more money, which I'm not going to spoil it for you and let you know what the outcome is because you've got to actually try that at home yourself. What do you think? What's your hypothesis? I think, I think um, you know, I'm, I've been around for a while, so I'm a little more cynical, but uh, I think they're trying to make me spend more money. <laughs> that's, that's the mindset I'm in. I'm like, this potting soil, this store brand looks perfectly good to me. Why would I want to spend more money? So that's what students can do at home. We've started with a question. We formed our hypothesis, which was our prediction. We tested. That's what we're now in the phase of. And we're going to collect our data. Hopefully you at home can set this up. If you're doing sunflowers and you have a yard that you could plant these in, I would recommend planting them in the ground because your plants can't grow very big with this amount of soil because they need nutrients and this is only that much nutrients. And the, the ground is going to give your plants a lot more space for the roots to really grow out and those roots are going to allow them to absorb nutrients and water and that's really important for plants. So if you're doing this at home, this would be fine if you want to do it in your bedroom and put them in the window seal, but in the ground is even better. Record your data over the next month, and we're going to be measuring each of the plants. And at the end of it, what you're going to do is you're going to draw your conclusions. That's step five, not tip. So drawing your conclusions is important because you want to say, well, what does our results actually tell us? We set out to answer if the premium potting soil did grow it twice as fast and it either did or it didn't and that's what we want to communicate to others and step six this is the most important step of the scientific method and that is we've got to share our results you know you can share your results so many ways nowadays you can do it on the internet you can do it on you know in a newspaper in a published scientific journal but however you communicate your results you want to share what you found in your experiment because it could help others further their research as well. Like right now, scientists who are seeking those vaccines for COVID-19, that's scientists around the world. And together with all of their experiments combined, the more that we share, the quicker we're going to get that vaccine, which means the quicker that we can all go back to normal and it saves so many people's lives. So I can't stress enough how important it is that scientists communicate their results, that last step of the scientific method. So- Yeah, Ty, that's great. I, I think that's an important point to bring up. And I mean, you're, you're doing it right now. It, you know, it's something as important as, you know, um, you know, you know COVID-19, for example, and then even in, in what you're doing, you're, you're helping consumers um, potentially save some money based on the out, outcome of, of your experiment. So I think that's really important. The, the sharing of results is just as important as, as figuring out the answer. Right. Yeah. And you know, another thing my students often ask is, well, what if we get to the end of it and our hypothesis that we predicted is wrong? And I say, well, it's not that it's wrong. It was just proven not to be true. And that can sometimes be just as helpful 
as finding out the opposite because either way you've learned something at the end of this whole thing. And that is the really important part um, for everyone to just keep in mind. So the scientific method, it is a set of steps that you can use to answer your questions. These are questions that can be as simple as this all the way to things that are going to completely change the world that can save lives that are really important questions and this is just a way to help you know exactly how to go through this and so that you can kind of check yourself and say okay i've got step one we asked the question we went all the way from forming the hypothesis to the end and we share and communicate our results and this is something that you'll use in science classes scientists are using it in research labs and it is very very important and everyone doesn't matter if you're a scientist or just a regular person or a teacher you're definitely going to use these steps yeah i agree hey ty can you can you uh just summarize real quick uh those steps one more time and, and just for the audience absolutely so step one we start by asking a question literally any question that you may have but step two we've got to make sure that we can make a hypothesis and that it's testable. So we've got to think about, okay, I've got my question, but how do I test it? In step two, we're gonna form that prediction, the hypothesis. In three, we're going to actually conduct the experiment. And that experiment will be the thing that we set up. It could be a month, it might be a year, could be just a day. And then in step four, we're gonna make sure that we're collecting and recording data because the actual data that we record in this one it was the height that's going to be the stuff that allows us to step five draw the conclusions and that conclusion is just a summary well what did we find during this experiment and what does it now tell us what do we know what do we not know and then on the final step and to me the most important we're going to communicate and share those results with other scientists and that's it that's awesome thanks thanks so much ty thanks for having me